Hey everyone, welcome to a Foundry Virtual Tabletop development video update. It's been a couple months since the last video, but I hope you'll forgive me because I've been really busy and productive making lots of exciting improvements to the core software. The last video showcased beta version 0.3.4, and now we're all the way up to 0.4.3, so there have been a ton of big changes since then. I'm going to cover some of the most exciting additions in this video, but there are many other new features that you can read about in the update notes on the Foundry website or on Patreon. First up, the application has a new configuration and setup menu, which allows you to manage your worlds, systems, and modules from a centralized interface when you start the application. Add-on content can be easily installed with a single click by providing an installation link for a system or a module. I'm going to go ahead and install the new Starfinder system that community member WildJ79 has been working on. The system is still relatively early in development, but I'm excited to see science fiction games being added to the Foundry VTT ecosystem. In addition to installing new game systems, I can also easily check for and install updates to existing modules to get the latest and greatest changes for all my community content. Be sure to check out the Community Modules and Game Systems pages on the Foundry VTT Community Wiki. It's incredible to see that there are now over 80 different add-on modules and game systems that are available. Let's create a new world using the Starfinder system that I just installed to take a quick peek at how development is coming along. When configuring the world, I'm now able to set a custom background banner and note the scheduled time for the next game session. When players connect to the join screen, they will see the custom description and image for the world, which helps to immediately convey the flavor of the setting. After joining my test world, running the Starfinder system, I can check out all the different actor and item entity types that are built into the system. Characters, NPCs, starships, and vehicles are all already supported, with their own unique sheet types for each entity. Remember that Starfinder in FVTT is a new system that isn't fully developed yet, but it's extremely cool to see how much progress has already been made. Next, I'm going to show a huge new feature which arrived in 0.4.2. But first, let's take a moment and appreciate this wonderful campaign map created by Keora on Patreon for his unique and artfully crafted Blood Grotto campaign setting. The setting features wonderful and evocative locations, lore, items, and original artwork, and it's the perfect backdrop for a December video update. The new feature I'm excited to show is the addition of built-in audio and video chat support directly within Foundry VTT. This work was done as an exciting collaboration with Kakaroto from the Foundry community and on Patreon. I'm thrilled with the results, and I'm sure you will be too. This feature can be enabled by navigating to the Configure Audio Video menu in the Settings sidebar, where different AV modes can be enabled. Audio only if you only want voice communication, video only if you're using an external audio channel, and audio video modes are all supported. Let me apologize in advance. I produced this video update on short notice and was not able to gather a group of players together to demonstrate a group call but I'll show more of this feature in future videos and live gameplay streams. Other configuration options which can be set on a per-user basis include the voice broadcasting mode, push-to-talk configuration, and hardware selection for choosing your input and output devices. The whole framework is built using WebRTC for peer-to-peer -peer calls, and the software allows you to finely customize your settings and even use an external signaling or relay server for advanced usage. In addition to networking and platform features, there are a lot of exciting additions that benefit gameplay directly. Let's use this dank sewer map to showcase new features for token vision, ambient lighting, and targeting systems. Our hero, Dahlgrim, is exploring these dark sewers with a bullseye lantern. We can configure Dahlgrim's light emission settings to cast light in a narrow beam, only illuminating what the dwarf can directly see in front of him. To heighten the tension, let's fill our sewer with some horrifying crawlers lurking in the water. As Dahlgrim explores the obscured cistern, his lantern casts light upon the enemies directly within his field of vision, while hiding foes which are concealed by the gloom. Another lighting tool that can increase immersion within your scenes is ambient light source tinting, which allows any placed light source to overlay a colored hue upon the affected area of the scene. I'll configure a new light source to cast a faint red glow in the adjoining chamber. 
The area affected by light sources is limited by nearby walls, but you'll notice that Dahlgrim can immediately see the reddish hue emanating from the room beyond. Ambient light sources can also be limited in their angle of effect. If, for example, I wanted a red spotlight or sentry beam, I can restrict the angle of the light and place it to cast a focused beam over just a portion of the map. Lastly, we can take a look at the new token targeting system, which allows each player to designate a set of tokens as their current targets. Tokens which are targeted display with a target frame around them, and other connected players can see a small colored pip above the token which highlights that another player has that creature marked as its target. Tokens can be targeted by double right-clicking on an enemy, using the token HUD, or by using the new target selection tool in the scene control palette. Most importantly, the addition of a target concept unlocks a lot of amazing automation capabilities within the API, where options to auto-resolve targeted roles and tests can now be incorporated into modules and systems. Check out the latest update to the Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition system for an amazing example of this in action. Another fun and gameplay enabling feature is the addition of rollable tables, which allow you to create randomized tables of results, conditions, encounters, and much more to entertain and surprise your players. When creating a rollable table from scratch, each result can be a freeform text field, a link to an existing entity within your world, an entry from an available compendium pack, or even another rollable table for nested layers of randomization. I'm going to set up a quick example table using some weapons from my own world and from the D&D 5e items compendium, just to demonstrate how it works. When the table is rolled, a result is drawn based on the provided dice formula, and the outcome is displayed in chat, either publicly for all players to see, or privately just for the roller or just for the game master. Each result in the table has its own odds of being drawn. Specific results can be locked or unlocked, and the whole table can be drawn from with or without replacement. When drawing from a table without replacement, results get locked automatically once you draw them, so they are not chosen again unless the table is reset or the result is manually unlocked. Furthermore, certain results can be given asymmetric odds of occurring, tipping the scales in favor of some outcomes over others. The final new feature I want to highlight in this video is a major overhaul to the D&D 5e system, which expands and improves significantly upon the structure of the underlying data model to empower more features and modules built in the 5e ruleset. The default character and NPC sheets have been redone in a more clean, functional, and aesthetically pleasing style. Collections of items, features, and spells can now be filtered and sorted for better organization. More significantly, the item data model, which defines the types of things that an actor can own, has been significantly expanded. Spells, feats, weapons, armor, and more now have a far more robust data structure which standardizes the way that ability activation, targeting, saving throws, and damage are recorded. A subset of the new options for fine-grained customization includes item level tracking of limited ability uses, support for recharged-based abilities, innate spellcasting and warlock pact magic, damage formula components for multiple damage types, spell upcasting and cantrip damage scaling, and item identification and chat flavor text. These expansions to the 5e data model provide a powerful scaffold for module authors to build exciting tools, features, and enhancements. As always, I can't wait to see what the community creates. That's all I have to show for today, but I would like to sincerely thank the community for your incredible support of the project. I'm so grateful for your help sharing the project with friends, providing me with feedback, and encouraging me forward. I'm still committed to releasing the software for sale early next year, I hope by the end of Q1, but most importantly once it's ready. If you're interested in getting your hands on VTT right away, please join our active community on Patreon to participate in ongoing beta testing for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Visit foundryvtt.com and patreon.com slash foundryvtt to learn more. Happy holidays and best wishes to you all for the new year. Cheers and happy gaming.